Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. It is time for yet another CNC build. I've decided to go ahead and build a Roderick Killer B uh, to kind of complement uh, my already existing CNC as that machine is great for cutting heavy stuff, aluminum, uh, other metals and hawking away with big end mills uh, but Using small end mills or larger work pieces, it is not ideal, as my white travel max is out of 20 centimeters and uh, the spindle max is out of 4000 RPM. The reason for choosing the Radrick Killer Bee is that I first thought I would build my own, uh, since I've already built uh, other CNC routers before, uh, it was an obvious choice to just uh, design my own. Um, but then upon sourcing the components, uh, I found the Radrick Killer Bee and realized that this is almost the exact machine that I was trying to build. And the price for it uh, was not any more expensive than it would have cost me to source all the components. And by buying the Killer Bee, all the work of uh, cutting out the side plates and all of that is already pre-done. So it was kind of a no-brainer to go with the uh, Killer Bee. However, I did not uh, get any of the additional accessories. I just went with a very basic kit. You can get it configured to basically a complete kit with all the electronics and everything, but I stuck with just the base machine and source all the other components separately. What you can see here uh, and we're able to see in the intro montage is the table that I built for it and uh, of course needs a sturdy table and I'm trying to kind of get the very maximum out of uh, the CNC possible. It already is at like the higher end of the hobby CNC uh, market as it does have linear rails and it's using lead screws instead of belts. Uh, but price-wise it is still uh, at or below uh, the Shapoko Pro which would be the closest uh, comparable machine uh, in the like pre-built uh, hobby segment. So what I'm hoping to do is for the total price to stay under the budget of the Shapoko Pro which was around $2800 without the spindle and uh, for me that also doesn't include an enclosure or a table but uh, so far it uh, looks like I should be able to stay under that budget uh, including the table and the enclosure and uh, almost including the spindle but not quite uh, since I am going with a significantly higher powered spindle than you will put on a Shippoku Pro. But part of uh, not wanting to get the very most out of that machine means that I need to be very precise at every single step. A large router uh, like this one, which is uh, one meter by 75 centimeters, I mean, it's not large in the router space for woodworking, but uh, as a hobby machine, it is relatively large. Uh, it is very important to have a flat base to start from. If your table is crooked or twisted and you put the relatively weak frame of a uh, CNC router on top, it will definitely also take that twist. And then you, if you have the machine twisted, machine frame twisted, and then you start cutting, your workpiece in the end is also twisted. Now I'm not talking about uh, big numbers here, and if you're just uh, cutting some signs out of wood, you will most likely never even notice that. But I'm trying to squeeze the most out of this machine, and also want to cut aluminum and uh, more precise stuff like uh, bigger uh, plexiglass uh, reservoirs and stuff like that. So I want a every bit as precise as I can get. I started off with this very thick tabletop, uh, it's just uh, some composite wood and uh, what I really like about this material is for one it's dirt cheap and two it does not really bend or warp with moisture as it is made up of a bunch of little fibers that are just kind of pressed and glued together, uh, it is very homogeneous. Then the base is just made out of, of basic uh, uh, lumber from the hardware store and I did make sure that we we'll get uh, the ones that are as straight as possible and I locked out uh, this time at the hardware store the lumber was actually very straight which is highly unusual uh, but I was able to get some uh, pretty much exactly straight uh, pieces and uh, cutting in precisely the table as it is is already very square and uh, quite low. But what I'm gonna go ahead next is uh, I'm gonna use a machinist level here, uh, which if you guys have never uh, seen one of those, it's basically the same as you would use to level a picture, except that it is much, much more precise. It has little uh, granulations on, on there, and one of these granulations means that uh, one of the sides of the level is 0.02 millimeters higher, which is just a tiny amount. That's about half a human hair. So while I really couldn't care less about this table being perfectly level, at a budget, this, such a level like that, uh, if you're not going for a fancy one, it can be high for like 30, 40 bucks. Uh, so and at a budget, by making this table perfectly level everywhere, I know there's no twist in it. 
You could also get like super fancy uh, straight edges and whatnot and use that to measure the twist and everything in this table, but that stuff is super expensive and kind of difficult to use. Uh, while using a level, I can just make sure that it's level everywhere and then I know there's no twist and once I put the machine on top, I can also level the machine perfectly everywhere and uh, I can put the level on top of the gantry and level the gantry and this way I can very easily uh, make sure that uh, it is all uh, nicely parallel and not twisted uh, without needing any fancy tools. This does mean though that I'm gonna have quite a bit of fun uh, shimming the, all the six legs here as using this standard level, put it on and it's already dead nuts, but uh, putting this one on it is basically at its maximum uh, and not even reading anything uh, because uh, the bubble is already off the scale. That's how much more precise this level is compared to a standard one. Alrighty, so after tracing my own tail for about an hour, I think I managed to uh, get the whole table fairly level. Uh, definitely the main thing was that uh, this side is just a bit lower, uh, was just a bit lower than this side because I guess the floor is not quite level, but uh, it is not uh, just uh, slanted that way. Uh, so uh, there definitely was a slight bit of twist in there that I was able to take out. Without any more weight on it, uh, I cannot uh, take any uh, more detailed measurements. But I would say that the whole uh, flatness of the, this table should be well, at least within half a millimeter, which is uh, quite decent. And I can, uh, once there's the CNC's on there and there's more weight, I can uh, go in and fine adjust uh, some of the shapes. Now in the end, I'm definitely gonna uh, give this table a paint job as well. It's gonna be the same uh, kind of black as everything around. Uh, but I think I'll leave that uh, till a later date uh, as uh, I'm probably gonna have to add some stuff on there as well. And I might uh, reorganize the bottom uh, a bit as well. In the next part, uh, we are going to uh, do the main assembly of uh, this machine. Uh, that's going to be one or two parts, I'm not quite sure yet. And before we then move on to elect the electronics. And I'm of course also going to build an enclosure all around uh, this thing, which I think is going to be uh, quite nice. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these uh, future parts. And also if you have any comments, suggestions, anything like that, leave them down below. If you like this video, please also give it a like. And with that, see you again next time.